Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, my name is Melissa Guller, and I'm the Director of Child Abuse and Neglect at the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges. And I will be presenting today alongside with my colleague, Dr. Sophia Gutowski. Um, this is part one of a two-part series covering a caseworker's companion guide to the Enhanced Resource Guidelines. Today we'll be providing you with an overview of a really exciting new resource that will serve as a companion to the document, the Enhanced Resource Guidelines, Improving Court Practice and Child Abuse and Neglect Cases. We will lovingly refer to it as the ERGs as we move forward. We will be describing the development process and how we were able to capture the voices from the field so that we could create a guide that would be truly helpful to caseworkers as they navigate the dependency court system. Lastly, we'll provide you with a brief description of the contents of the guide. So we'd like to really uh, know who is participating today. Um, so we are gonna pull up a poll right now, which will allow us to see who's in the audience. So if you could please select who is here today and select the option that best describes your role. I'll give that a minute. Well, great. Thank you so much for um, completing the poll. Um, it looks like we have some TA providers, which is great, um, some court personnel and advocates. So thank you so much. We're, we're very grateful for you to um, join us today. And we're excited to unveil um, some of the information that helped us create this caseworker's guide. We'll move on now. Um, oops, sorry, I think I went. Here we go. <laughs> um, the goals and purpose of the caseworker companion guide um, was really to adapt and tailor the enhanced resource guidelines bench cards for use by caseworkers to provide a resource to increase knowledge about effective hearing practice. Um, it also assists caseworkers in preparing for and participating, participating effectively in the hearing process, which includes hearings that um, involve both child abuse and neglect and domestic violence specifically. The guide also assists in enhancing court and child welfare agency collaboration, which is a cornerstone of the enhanced resource guidelines. So you're probably wondering if you're not familiar, what the heck are the Enhanced Resource Guidelines? So the Enhanced Resource Guidelines um, Improving Court Practice in Child Abuse and Neglect Cases actually served as a blueprint for the handling of child abuse and neglect cases and helped to ensure high quality hearing practice. The original guidelines were actually developed in 1995 and over 40,000 copies were disseminated nationwide. And 2016, the original publication was actually updated to include new federal law, lessons from the field, and some of the innovative court practice, which was informed by research. The enhanced resource guidelines are actually grounded in four basic concepts. Judicial leadership, efficient management of child abuse and neglect cases, timely decision making, and fairness in due process. An essential part of the enhanced resource guidelines that are guided by the key principles for permanency planning. The key principles include keeping families together, ensuring access to justice, cultivating cultural responsiveness, engaging family through alternative dispute resolution, ensuring child safety, permanency, and well-being, ensuring adequate and appropriate family time, providing judicial oversight, 
ensuring competent and adequately compensated representation, and advancing the development of adequate resources along with demonstrating judicial leadership and foster collaboration. These key principles are, are certainly the underpinnings for the enhanced resource guidelines. And for more details on what each of these um, principles includes, you can download those, those on the NCJ FCJ website. And just to know that the although the enhanced resource guidelines themselves were developed to serve as a judicial resource, we have found that they also have served as a valuable roadmap for all court stakeholders, including caseworkers. So part of our approach in educating um, court system personnel has been to include caseworkers, attorneys, and others um, in training on the enhanced resource guidelines. And we've received very positive feedback in how the enhanced resource guidelines have really helped improve um, practice and have really uh, also helped with collaboration across um, stakeholder types. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Gatowski, who's going to talk a little bit about how we developed the companion guide. So Dr. Gatowski? Thanks, Melissa. Um, our intent with developing a caseworker's companion guide to the uh, Enhanced Resource Guidelines document, which, as Melissa mentioned, was written primarily to be a judicial resource tool for a judicial audience, was to provide a resource to caseworkers for building knowledge about hearing practice um, with a focus on detailing judges' expectations for abuse neglect hearings so that caseworkers could enhance hearing practice generally and particularly in cases involving domestic violence. So we had an idea from years of doing collaborative, uh, collaborative training with courts and child welfare agencies that uh, a caseworker checklist that covered what caseworkers might do to be effective in hearings based on the guidance we were giving judges would be helpful, but we wanted to make sure that we were correct in that assumption by going to the field and asking more specifically about whether such a tool would be helpful. Uh, so before we began development of the guide, we conducted a needs assessment survey um, seeking child welfare system professionals' thoughts about training and technical assistance needs in preparing for participating in and following up after child abuse and neglect hearings. And then those responses to the needs assessment were used to actually design the content of the companion document to identify uh, the specific tools, the approach that would best tailor um, the technical assistance to the needs identified by caseworkers in the field. So we designed an online needs assessment survey process and we invited child welfare system professionals um, who were part of the contact lists of the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges to take the survey. We also reached out to partnering child welfare organizations um, for them to send an invitation email to participate in the survey to their own contact lists of child welfare professionals. The survey asked um, about a number of things, uh, specifically caseworkers' experience with child abuse and neglect cases and hearings um, specifically their area of child welfare specialization, the barriers they face when it comes to being effective as a child welfare professional in an abuse and neglect hearing, such as the challenges faced in working with a court in hearings and the training or technical assistance resource materials they felt would be helpful to overcome those challenges. We also asked them about the concept of a hearing checklist or bench card and whether they thought such a tool would be helpful to them. And we solicited their opinions on any other suggestions they had for a caseworker's companion guide to the enhanced resource guidelines. We ended up with a total survey sample of 268 child welfare professionals. 
um, that can be broken down as 142 caseworkers and 126 caseworker supervisors. You can see from this slide that the majority of survey respondents were experienced ones, experienced child welfare practitioners with more than six years of child welfare experience. In fact, 36% of all of the respondents who answered this question had over 15 years of experience um, in child welfare practice. The most common areas of specialization are listed in the bullets there um, with ongoing child protection followed by foster care, uh, intake, adoption specialists, and 9% of our survey responses, respondents identified themselves as generalists. So these would be individuals who handle all aspects of a child welfare case, you know, from intake to ongoing to adoption. So our survey respondents were asked to identify areas in which they felt uh, to work more effectively in hearings they may need additional training or technical assistance or practical guidance. So we asked our survey respondents if you could choose an area for a companion document to the enhanced resource guidelines um, to address in order to help you be more effective in abuse and neglect hearings what would those areas be? And here are the key themes identified by the caseworkers surveyed. Preparing for court, understanding the court's expectations for caseworkers and the role of the caseworker in the child abuse and neglect court process. Preparing court reports and court documentation effectively, providing effective testimony, and understanding relevant laws, statutes, and policies. And you can see by these key themes that they're all interrelated. For example, knowing the court's expectations for caseworkers helps you prepare for court. Preparing for court includes producing an effective court report or documentation. Providing effective testimony is helped by understanding rele relevant laws and the court's expectations for hearings. Survey respondents were also asked to consider each of the specific hearings in a child abuse and neglect case and then let us know whether a checklist for caseworkers um, would be helpful to them or not. You can see from the slide that most survey respondents thought checklists adapted for use by caseworkers for each of the hearings would be very helpful. Some of the comments we received explaining why they felt checklists would be helpful included, um, and I'll quote some here for you, adapting the same checklist that is provided to judges to workers would help us be more prepared for hearings and provide information that judges are looking for in order to make an informed decision. It'll help us better anticipate the questions we, we will be asked, end quote. Here's another one. Providing a quick reference for workers, especially new, newer workers, for what the court is looking for in each hearing would be a valuable resource. It'll help a worker to be more prepared, to make sure that we have the specific items needed in court reports, the attachments needed, will help us focus our recommendations and progress reports on what will be required for us to impart to the court during a hearing. Um, we also received a lot of recommendations, though, that while checklists are very helpful, they should also be user-friendly. Um, and that was described as not being too text-heavy, not be filled with lots of narrative, but instead have key points or critical important considerations and concepts highlighted, and concrete suggestions um, or tips or practical strategies related to those concepts right at hand. So not having to sift through a lot of text in order to pull out um, you know, the practical points to apply in a hearing. And also, um, relatedly then, uh, 
resources listed for the reader to turn to for more information if needed. So we really took that to heart in designing the bench cards to make sure that they would be as user friendly as possible. So what we ended up with um, is we took all of those responses provided to the needs assessment survey questions and directed the adaptation of the guidelines to help tailor the companion guide to those specific needs and concerns that were raised by the workers. Um, the companion guide then provides basic information um, we feel that caseworkers will need to work successfully with the courts in hearings. It includes an introduction that gives a background to the enhanced resource guidelines, um, information about the underlying philosophy behind those guidelines. Melissa mentioned those, the key principles of permanency planning, and also outlines the developmental process that I summarized that we went through in order to design the companion guide. The introduction also includes a summary of relevant laws, statutes, and policies governing abuse and neglect practice. But the bulk of the guide, the real meat of it, are the hearing checklists covering the expectations of the court for the hearing, the role of caseworkers in meeting those expectations, and the case management strategies for caseworkers to prepare for, participate in, and follow up after abuse and neglect hearings. Guidance on hearing practice is provided for each key hearing type, and it's provided generally, but also in the context of domestic violence cases, which pose additional challenges for caseworkers. Resources that can be accessed for more information are included, because we heard that would be important to, be make, to make the checklist user-friendly. Um, and all of that, uh, was written to be not text heavy, but instead provide key or critical areas for practice that caseworkers can uh, refer to, whether it be in a training or in a field setting, um, as strategies for being effective in hearing. It's important to note um, that neither the enhanced resource guidelines nor the companion guide that I've just described offer criteria for state agency or court intervention into the lives of families. So both documents do not define abuse and neglect. They don't describe what kinds of abuse and neglect justify a child's removal. They don't specify when they can be returned home or set forth grounds for termination of parental rights. Instead, the focus is on the hearing process, setting forth the characteristics of each hearing type outlining the needed procedural steps, identifying key tasks and responsibilities for caseworkers, identifying ways to ensure processes promote the safety of children and adult parent victims in cases of domestic violence. So the companion guide is not a step-by-step -step curriculum, but rather a resource for effective handling of hearings and a tool for examining and evaluating current policies and practices. It can be used in conjunction with the original enhanced resource guidelines, and it can be used in collaboration with the court and child welfare agency in collaborative training. By having knowledge of the court's expectation for hearings, the role of caseworkers in the hearing process, we hope that child welfare professionals can work in partnership with courts towards the safety, permanency, and well-being of children and families more effectively. I'll now turn it over to Melissa, who will foreshadow part two of our webinar series. Thank you, Sophie. Um, and I really appreciate that you've gone through um, sort of the uh, steps that we took to really customize this to the needs of the field. Um, as Sophie discussed, we are going to be offering a part two of the webinar series that's actually scheduled to take place next Tuesday, September 29th at 11 a.m. Pacific. 
And during that session, we'll be providing an actual preview of the guide and introducing the checklist. And as previously discussed, these checklists really do provide important guidance on preparing for hearings, um, actually the participation in the hearing, and then consideration when domestic violence is an issue in the case and how to actually prepare for subsequent hearings. Um, we're really excited to announce today that the companion guide will be posted on the MCJ FCJ website very soon, so you'll have an opportunity um, to download that. You can also download the enhanced resource guidelines themselves and the key principles of permanency planning. And that's available at ncjfcj.org. Um, as Sophie mentioned before, this being a companion, we really do encourage that um, you have take some time to look at the larger document, the enhanced resource guidelines. Um, there's, there's the full checklist that judges utilize as well as general issues that the court will um, need to inquire about, the philosophies around the key principles. It's, it's a large document. However, I think it's, it's really um, a great document to preview and then look at the companion guide as something that can easily uh, guide and prepare you for hearings. So with that, we'd like to open it up for questions. Um, please feel free to type into the chat or um, unmute your phone, and we certainly welcome discussion around um, the, the guide. If you have any questions around the development, if you um, have any you know, suggestions on, on how you could see this um, working for you as, as you may um, implement it in your current role. I see some folks are typing in the chat, so we'll wait for those to come up. So there's a question about what are some special considerations that case workers should make when they are working with families in which domestic violence is present? So I can answer a couple of those questions. Um, one is always ensuring the safety of the survivor. Um, we certainly know that participation in hearings um, is important for, for parents to uh, know what's going on in their case, um, also engage with the judge. However, safety of the survivor is extremely important, um, and there are recommendations on how judicial officers and the enhanced resource guidelines um, can certainly make sure that the court is notified around existing domestic violence and that um, accommodations are made. And that's similar to any sort of alternative dispute resolution processes. Um, there's guidance for caseworkers on making sure that those issues are brought up to the court. And Sophie, was there anything specific in the survey that came up? Um, no, you covered what the recommendations were from the survey with respect to ensuring that the uh, bench cards or checklists, caseworker checklists, um, address concerns, um, you know, related to when there's a, a domestic violence issue in a case. Um, I can't think of anything in addition, um, you know, certainly in part two of the webinar, um, we'll be able to show um, participants exactly where those linkages lie um, in the, each of the different hearing bench cards. I would say, though, that um, uh, we also make sure that we link readers <clears throat> with methods and tools that have been developed to specifically address 
the intersection between uh, domestic violence and child protection um, and provide those links to the resources under each kind of relevant concept and bench cards too. Absolutely, and I think another consideration that is outlined is specific to family time um, and how that would occur um, with the consideration of, of survivor safety. Uh, each of the key principles that I mentioned earlier um, are, are included to be, de and there's detail as to what um, sort of supports those ideas, but it's not just the philosophy around the permanency. You'll see that there's also a piece around how is that relevant to the caseworker, um, and then how does the how should domestic violence be considered in the implementation of the key principles? Are there any other questions that um, may have resonated with you that you would like to either add in the chat or feel free if you'd like to be unmuted, you can um, raise your hand with the icon up above and Stephanie will unmute you. Linnell has added in the chat um, links to both the enhanced resource guidelines and also um, the ncjfcj.org website link. So Sophie, it doesn't look like we have any um, any further questions today? Um, do you have anything to add in closing that you would like to um, include? I would just encourage um, those of you um, who are really interested in this to join us for part two of the webinar because we'll take a deeper dive into the checklists. We'll be able to give you a preview then of the final publication that we hope that you will be um, accessing and using that shows what we're talking about in terms of guidance to caseworkers for preparing for hearings and participating them in them and then the linkages to considerations when domestic violence is an issue in the case. Um, I think that we can have a robust discussion around those and uh, I hope that uh, you'll join us on September 29th. Thank you, Sophie. Um, and it looks like I now put a link for the second webinar um, so that you uh, can certainly uh, register for that. We encourage you definitely to come back for, for part two. And uh, if you have colleagues that you think would benefit from from knowing more about, about this important resource, um, please encourage them to join as well. Uh, so thank you so much, and we look forward to hopefully seeing you on next week. Yes, thanks, everybody.